Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Road to 2000. As always, my name is Caleb Denby, and I will be your driver on this journey. Uh, sorry about the brief delay getting started here tonight. We had some tech issues, but we're up and running now. Uh, and I'm glad that we are, because it's going to be a very fun lecture. So uh, if you come to the chess club often, you might have run into someone by the name of Jacob Sanders, who likes to play the grob quite a bit. So tonight, I am going to be showing you a refutation to the grob, gonna give you that complete repertoire against one G4, hopefully to get you into winning positions no matter what white does, because that's just how bad this move one G4 is. So hopefully we can ruin Jacob's day and we can make him start playing some real chess. Some real chess is the goal. So of course, what is the grob? The grob is one G4 by white. So this is without a doubt the single worst move that white can play on move one, even worse than f3, because f3 at least controls the center. g4 puts a pawn on a square where it's hanging. It does not control the center. It does not help you develop any piece aside from the bishop on f1, which we'll see is not going to be good enough. So um, I was talking to the in-person audience a little bit before here. We have one grob fan in the audience. Now, have you guys faced the grob much before? Are you familiar with this opening at all? No, okay, so this is the type of annoying thing that people will like do, uh, especially on the internet when they wanna like, you know, be cool and beat you with a bad opening. Uh, th there are some, some real crazy people out there, Jacob Sanders, who believe in this opening, um, but either way, we're gonna give you a, a nice little uh, antidote to this G4 move. So if you flip on an engine here, it'll tell you that d5 is really, really good for black, and e5 is really, really good for black, and I think knight c6 is really, really good for black. Probably all of these moves are also really, really good for black. This move is probably really, really good for black. There's a lot of things that you can do here and just be a lot better. Um, so tonight, I wanted to show you sort of the, the quote-unquote conventional way of playing against the grob. This is, I would say, the, the main refutation that's, that's out there. So after g4, what you're gonna wanna do is go d5. Now, why choose d5 over e5? Well, of course, e5 is also a really good move and you'll be better if you play e5. But d5 gets to the, the heart of the issues here for white. So of course, when you put this pawn on g4, this pawn is hanging, it is attacked, and with d5, we are threatening to capture the pawn. So my, my Grob fan here, what do you do against d5? Bishop g2. Yeah, bishop g2, right? So this is what I would say 90% of Grob players are gonna play. They're gonna play bishop g2 here. Now, why do they play bishop g2? Well, because if you capture this pawn, then they get to play some tricky lines involving c4 when they're gonna try to break down your light squares and queen b3 when they continue to try to break down your light squares. Uh, that being said, bishop takes g4, I think, is the best move because it takes a pawn for nothing, which is pretty strong in the game of chess, capturing a pawn for nothing. So we are going to look at those slightly tricky variations today, show you that you don't need to know too much in order to refute them, and we'll see at the end of the day, in fact, it is going to be a strictly winning position for black. So bishop takes g4 is the move we're going to be looking at. Now, if white sort of uh, abandons the, the game plan here and just plays a normal move like d4, well, you're going to get a very normal looking d4 opening, uh, except that white should have a pawn on g3, and instead of that, black is just up a clean pawn. So very, very good for black. What can you do here? You can defend your pawn, make this bishop look dumb. Let's say, you know, like knight c3 or something, you develop your pieces. Knight f3, you develop your pieces. e3, you develop your pieces. Bishop f4, go e6. You're just up a pawn for nothing, which is pretty good in the game of chess, being up a pawn for nothing. So white can't really do that. Then if, if you're going to do that, then like you're just giving pawn odds to your opponent for, for act absolutely nothing. You know, if you wanted to play like that, you would go here first, and then you would go here, and you would play this position, which is also like, you know, not at all a problem for black, by the way. This is like totally equal, except just imagine this position with the, without the g-pawn. That's what happens if they play the grab and then don't try to play the, the tricky line after bishop takes g4. 
So what is the tricky line? Well, of course, it starts with c4. This is the whole point of White's play here. He's saying, look, I drew your bishop out, your light squared bishop. I've, I've drawn it out into the game, uh, away from the defense of these light squares on your queen side. Now, while I've been doing that, I developed my bishop to start targeting these light squares. And this is going to put you in a bad way. So this is by far the, the main line, I would say. So what's a very natural response to this move c4? What would you look at here with the black pieces? Take it. Ta okay, taking it would be ambitious. There, is, are, there are some issues here that you have to look out for, although I think I would argue that even here, black might be better. Um, you can give up a full exchange, and I think if you ask the computer, it's going to say, yeah, black is, black is better. Um, so you can't you can take the pawn, but even more natural than that, you know, we don't want to give up our rook, let's say. Rooks are valuable. C6. Yeah, I would say c6 is the most natural move, right? You're, you're looking at this bishop on g2. You don't want to see it land on b7. Why not play the move c6? Try and defend your pawn. Keep this bishop out of the game. Uh, so what is white going to do against that? Well, we're going to see that there's two main variations to look at, and that's really all, all that's going on here. So I want to start with this move c takes d5, followed by queen b3. At first glance, this attacks two pawns at the same time. Scary stuff. Uh, how are we going to deal with it? I don't know. Uh, but before we look, just to tell you, next we're going to look at this move queen b3 without taking on d5. It is actually going to change a few things, and, and we'll see why uh, in, in the next variations. But first, we're sticking with this. Takes takes queen b3. Now, between the d-pawn and the b-pawn, which pawn do you think is going to be more important to black's position here? Yeah, definitely the d-pawn, right? It's keeping this bishop out of the game. It's controlling the center. This is going to be the pawn that we want to keep. Now, we could keep it with e6. e6 is a perfectly fine move here. Black is going to be better after e6. That's the theme of the lecture. Black is going to be better after everything. But the absolute best way to play is with knight f6. And we'll see why we left this pawn on e6 in just a moment here. Now, again, if white doesn't take on b7, we're up a g-pawn for nothing. So you, you sort of have to continue with the point here. If you just try to play something like d4, uh, I believe we can just go queen to d7. And now everything's defended. We'll develop. We'll be up a pawn for nothing. So we have to take on b7 if we're going to say our opening makes any sense. Now the rook is attacked. Uh, we want to defend the rook, so we develop the knight out to d7. Can't go to either of those squares, so d7 will do for now. And then if you look in the master's database on Lee Chess, I think this game has been reached twice. Uh, yeah, knight c3 was played once, which is the main move we're going to look at. I think it's the move that makes the most sense. And d4 has been played once. So let's start with the bad move, d4. So this was played in a game between... Let's see, someone named Nikolai Vlasov and someone named Rudolf Mayesen. Mayesen, I believe. Uh, Rudolf playing the black pieces here, and he immediately found the way to just refute the opening for white. So things are already real, real bad for white. And I mean real bad. Uh, so the danger here is black has three pieces developed, and white has, maybe you can count the bishop as developed, and, but it's not really influencing the queen side. It's stopped up at this pawn. Uh, and white's queen has gone, you know, pawn, pawn hunting. So as is often the case here, uh, black is just sort of winning by force against this queen. So pay attention to this tactic, because this tactic is going to become really, really important in both this line and, and other lines as well. So you want to start off with this move, rook to b8. Now, just quickly, what happens if you want to play the move uh, queen to c6? How does this one lose? <laughs> yep, simply rook c8. Queen's attacked. This bishop is actually undefended on c1. And now we begin to see the problem with not developing your pieces. Uh, they're not great on the back row. Not great. Um, queen has to move. You just take. Game's over. So you have to go to a6 or a7. 
Let's see what happened in the game first. In the game, queen takes a7 was played. Uh, and then here, uh, black is just immediately winning again, thanks to the issue with this uh, bishop on c1. And this is the move that I want you to pay attention to. With this queen on a7, black can make a very clever move to threaten to trap this queen and also target this bishop on c1. So let's see if you guys have the move here. How can we threaten to trap the queen and also target this bishop? Queen c8. Yep, simply queen to c8. Of course, hitting the bishop with the threat of checkmate. And what's our second threat? Rook to a8, this queen has no squares. So white is going to try to solve both problems at the same time, bishop f4. Now if we play rook to a8, of course, white will play uh, queen to c7. And still be much worse probably, but you know won't be losing a queen. So what's the, uh, what's the finishing blow here? E5. Yeah. e5, it's going to attack this bishop, cut it off from the c7 square and maintain our threat of rook to a8. So now if bishop e5, for example, trying to renew the defense. Checkmate. Yeah, checkmate is good. <laughs> checkmate is good. Um, this also doesn't even work because we can, no, we can't do this. We do have to play checkmate, but checkmate is good. So e5 and white is in a very, very bad way. And this is actually, I believe, how this game continued. D takes e5 was white's choice in the game. Um, this does actually give the white queen a square. So rook to a8, bishop queen to e3 is going to be you know, not immediately losing material for white. But black found this nice finishing tactic. It's a little two mover here. Bishop c5. No squares for the queen aside from one. So it moves to the square. And then, of course, rook to b4 attacks two things at the same time. Queen to c2 is one of the only safe squares for the queen. Um, now rook takes f4, taking a piece. White takes on f6 to try and you know keep keep the number of pieces the same. But now we take f2, and things things are bad. Things are bad. King d1, rook d4, knight d2, castles, and this game does not last much longer. Uh, bishop takes on g1. Why doesn't white recapture this? I think uh, some, something to do with this is probably why. And it's, it's just over. It's just over for white. It's just over. Um, yeah. We can, we can see the rest of the moves. But uh, white went ahead and resigned here because all of the pieces are hanging. Takes and takes will be played next. So not too bad. Not too bad. Um, by move eight in this game, the evaluation was minus seven uh, with this nice tactic, queen to c8. So this queen c8 move is a really useful tactic to have in mind, especially when white goes pawn hunting with, with queen takes a7. Now, white, of course, does have a better move here in the form of queen to a6, but uh, the ideas here for black are going to look pretty, uh, pretty familiar. We're actually just going to go e5 again. And again, we can make use of the fact that this queen is, is very, very horribly placed. Uh, if you go d, e5, you're going to play knight c5, and your queen is all but trapped. Go to a3 or c6. If you go to c6, now you actually are trapped. That's a free queen for me. If you go to a3, uh, amongst other things, go knight e4. You can actually play this really nasty looking move, knight to b3. Attacking the queen, attacking the rook. Queen takes knight is met with rook takes queen, and it's uh, you're, you're busted. You're just busted. Uh, check again will be blocked, and you have all the same problems as before. Black totally totally winning. So queen a6 also not going to be good enough. So this move d4 I think just loses sort of on the spot. It's very bad for for white. It's like minus four. Uh, so this move knight c3 is a little bit of a better try in our quote unquote main line here. So what's the point of knight c3? Uh, well, if we try the same thing, which we actually are, then you'll see that at the end of the day, we can go e5 here still. Um, <clears throat> if we go queen to c8, uh, trying to do something similar, notice that white has not blocked his path off uh, along this diagonal. And in addition, we don't have any threats against c1, thanks to this nice move knight c3. 
Uh, on top of that, white is making some threats against our d5 pawn. So here, if you don't want to know anything, you can actually play e6 and be slightly better, just defending your center. Then next, you're going to develop your pieces, and you can be slightly better. But we want to win. We want to refute the grob. And so we're going to go e5 here, just uh, trying to take over the center completely. And this is going to put whites in, in a very tough spot. So if you don't take on d5 here, then again, sort of what are you doing with your pieces? I'm just going to continue with bishop to c5. And you, again, will, will have uh, a, a very, very bad position. So knight takes d5 is the only move that really makes sense. Uh, we can take that guy. Bishop takes d5. Now the point of e5 is to come out with bishop c5. And we have all our pieces in the game, basically, while white is still, still struggling. So queen to a4 does attack our bishop. Don't hang that guy. So we'll come back. Now after knight to f3, we can actually castle here. And castles makes a threat. So what happens if white castles? What was black's threat with the move uh, kingside castles? Yeah, ju just simple tactics, right? Just simple tactics. Knight b6, all the things are attacked. I'll take your guy. Nothing you can do about it. Um, so white doesn't have time to castles. Uh, to castle is the point. And unfortunately for white, there's still very few squares where this queen can move to and not get captured. So you could go back to d1, but then you've moved your queen all the way back to d1, and again, you are in a lot of trouble. So queen to h4 is a little bit more active, which is really the only move to, to keep white in the game. And if we do a quick engine check, Okay, queen h4 is minus 3.7. It's also white's best move. So pretty unfortunate. <laughs> uh, pretty unfortunate. So we're going to look at queen h4. Bishop back to e7. Of course, we don't want to trade the queens. Our opponent is missing a g pawn, and their king is going to be weak. We go bishop e7, queen g3. This attacks our pawn. We actually do want to keep our e5 pawn here. So we'll go bishop f6, just defending. And again, pretty much on every turn here, Black can play a number of alternatives and, at worst, be slightly better. So if you're worried you're going to mess this up, uh, you might, but then you'll still be slightly better because your position is just really overwhelmingly good here. Um, so after castles, uh, we're on move 15, and I'm going to show you a nice little sequence that uh, basically wins, wins your opponent's queen by, by force here. So let's try... And, and follow the path here. So how can we get after our opponent's king and force our opponent to, to sacrifice some material? What ideas do you guys have? Rook b4. Yeah, rook b4 is the first move that is really going to stick out to you. Um, who else has some ideas? Any other ideas? Is there something with e4? Yeah, e4 also looks very, very nasty. And uh, yeah, so far you guys are the best. I think both those moves win. <laughs> uh, it's not the move I'm going to recommend, though. The move that I, I'm going to recommend is very forcing, and it gets you there very quickly. Um, well, actually, not too quickly, but it's forcing so that ev every move sort of comes naturally. Uh, there's one more path we could take that, on the surface, looks like it might be a little bit of a slower way to, to come after your opponent. Yeah, okay, we could go h5. Um, I'm not so concerned. So h5 is kind of a funny move. Um, in general, when your opponent has a pawn on g2 or g3, h5 is a really great idea because you can go h5, h4, and then maybe someday you get to take your opponent's g pawn, and then they won't have a g pawn anymore. Uh, in this case, we already took our opponent's g pawn, which is why they're dead lost. So h5 doesn't actually make quite as much sense here because we already sort of achieved the, the point of h5 without having to do it. And this is why the grob is a bad opening. Um, the idea I'm fishing for is to actually sort of just weasel our rook over here along this sixth rank. And this turns out, I think, to be the simplest way to, to win the game. 
So I think the computer is going to say that uh, root b4, no, it's going to say that e4 is the best of these options. Just to give you a little taste of what this looks like, e4, um, this is horrendous for white. Going back to e1, we're just going to come out like this and this, and the game is over. So white has to go for this little tactic here. And then I think the engine wants to take on f3, take on e2, and uh, basically just, just win this position. I think you can go rook e8, and you go this way. It looks, looks very, very strong. So e4, good idea. Rook b4, also a good idea. I think at this point, white has to play, uh, I think d4 is white's best, best option here. And again, things are going to get a little bit, a little bit tough. For, for white. Maybe I'm misremembering. What is, what is white's best option after this one? Yeah, go d4. Yeah, I had it all right. And then a3. And then that momentarily displaces my rook. Black is still going to be better, but it's actually not quite so easy to get this rook uh, to, to swing across here with this sort of clogged up center and white's control over the g5 square still. So I like this move, knight c5, that the engine is... Uh, not saying is the, the top move, but, but one of the top moves. Um, and I like it because, again, it's very, very forcing. And now black is going to win in the same way against pretty much everything. If you try the move e4, I'm just going to take it. And now you have nothing defending any of the light squares around your king. Um, and I think the same plan here, rook b6, move the bishop, rook g6, is going to end your game, especially since you don't have any control over f3. My bishop can retreat, be on the long diagonal. I'm going to win. So that is to say, white is basically forced to retreat this bishop. And the good news is, it doesn't really matter where he goes. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to jump in with knight e4, misplace this, uh, this queen for white a little bit more, uh, put it back on g2. Now we're going to play queen to c8 with a very uh, simple idea. We want to go bishop h3, force queen h1, maybe even take a rook, but maybe not take a rook. Maybe just leave our bishop there. Um, white really only has one choice against this. White needs to try this move, knight to e1. The point being, if you do this, I can take your knight. So knight e1, the point is to give this queen uh, a square to breathe on. Um, if you don't play knight e1, if you play something like rook d1, rook e1, for example, I will go bishop h3. And now after queen to h1, like you, you, you might as well... Might as well resign. I think rook b4 works here. I think rook b6 also. Oh, queen g4 is mate in two. Good call. Good call. Um, so yeah, you, you absolutely have to play knight e1. Um, so now knight e1 has successfully stopped our idea of bishop h3. But not to worry. Now we are just going to go rook b6. And moving the bishop out of the way pretty much to any square in rook g6 is simply unstoppable. You just you, you cannot stop this idea. Uh, just an example line d3 apparently is best. I'll move. And then here, I get to throw in a nice little idea of bishop h3 first, uh, I think. And queen g3, rook g6. I won your queen. If you go this way, check. I'll take your rook first. And then uh, I'll go on to win your queen later, probably. <laughs> probably you're still going to end up losing your queen here, unfortunately. Um, so. This is how it works. This is how you win the queen. There's just nothing you can really do. Uh, knight to g2, for example. Take the queen, hg3, and now you go queen g4. And after bishop d5, I decided to call it quits on showing any moves, because black is just very, very clearly winning here. Uh, you have a queen for a knight and a rook. Uh, however, none of white's pieces make any sense. You can go h5, h4, and then checkmate white. You can go queen e2, queen f3, and then try to checkmate you can do any number of things here, and black is, is going to be completely winning. h5, h4, with the idea of h takes g3, I think is the cleanest. But again, there's, there's a lot of ways to win the game from this point. So that is my refutation to sort of the main line of the grab. That, that's what it's all about. So let's take it from the top here, see if you guys can, can call out the moves as we go. g4, what move are we going to play? Yeah, d5, straight to the point, your pawn is attacked. Uh, bishop g2. Now what do we do? Yeah, your opponent hung a pawn. Might as well take it. Um, c4. Our opponent wants to come after us. What's the most natural idea? c6. We want to cut off the bishop and defend our light squares. 
Now we're looking at c takes d5, c takes d5, queen to b3. Now which pawn do we care about? Yeah, we care about the d-pawn, so knight f6 to defend the pawn. Remembering we want to keep this e5 option in reserve, which is why we didn't go e6. Also, maybe we want to bring our bishop back. So that's another reason not to play e6. Now white, again, sort of has to take this pawn. Otherwise, he's down a pawn for nothing. So queen b7. This move's obvious. We have to defend the rook and uh, develop our knight. So we go knight d7. Knight c3. And now how do we... Uh, approach the position here. This is our first moment where we need to sort of settle down and remember what to do. So I think e5 is a good move, but it's not the move I want to play. So I want to distract this queen first. first. Yeah, we go rook b8 first, now queen a7, and of course now your move e5. Um, and I showed you the idea with my arrow, but don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so knight takes d5. What else from white? What else are we going to do? Otherwise, black has all the same ideas and also a d5 pawn. So white's going to capture. Now, of course, we want to take this knight. And what's the follow-up? Yeah, we go bishop c5, developing with tempo against the queen. White goes queen to a4, making a threat. So how do we deal with it? Just retreat. Knight f3. Yeah, nice and simple, castle. And this move, of course, also makes a threat. Our threat is knight b6, so white goes queen h4. Do we want to trade queens? Of course not. Bishop e7 with tempo, keeping the, the tempo moves coming. Now queen to g3 attacks our pawn. So what move defends? Bishop f6, we get castles. And this is where I asked you guys to list some moves. All of your moves were very good. One of them was even the best move, but it's not the move I'm recommending. What move am I recommending? Yeah, knight c5. Taking advantage of this bishop. Bishop's going to move out of the way. And knight e4, misplacing the queen. And finally, how are we? Uh, well, I, I said finally, not quite finally. So we can misplace white's pieces even further. Yeah. Queen d7, I think, works just as well, but I like queen to c8. Um, the only reason being, maybe there's one or two lines where white tries to escape with this and gets a tempo on our queen if we go to d7. So queen c8 instead, white must play knight e1. And now, of course, the, the finishing touch. Yeah, rook to b6, we move the bishop, we play rook g6, and the game ends. And there you go. That's how you refute the grab. It takes 18 moves. Most of them are not too unnatural. They all have some logical flow to them. You remember a couple key ideas. This rook b8 idea, this e5 idea, and you're going to do very, very well. Again, if you happen to mess it up along the way, it's not like you're in big danger. Black is going to be a, at least a little bit better in pretty much every move I, I thought to play in, in these positions. So rook b6, just to show one more time, I showed the move d3, bishop b7 takes bishop h3 and rook g6 in order to, to win the game here. Now, I didn't show this line, actually, now that I'm looking at it. So let's see what happens if white tries queen to f3. Is this where I'm looking? I don't think this is where I was looking at it. Uh, ah, I was looking here. So de4. Bishop h3, what happens if white tries queen to f... No, d e4. Oh, I see. Okay. So d3, bishop e7. I thought it was worth mentioning what happens if white tries queen to f3 here. The point being, it removes the queen from the threat of rook to g6, now that this has been introduced. Uh, but here, you also win via very simple means. You give check. The king has to move. If you go knight to g2, you go bishop h3. Very strong, so king to h1. And then our knight's attacked, and it turns out in this case, it is good to just remove the knight from the threat of capture. And then I showed a couple more moves. Rook g1, bishop g4. This queen has no squares on this diagonal, so it comes back. You take e2, bishop g5. You're just winning. <laughs> You're just totally, totally winning here. I think h6 is good. I think many, many things are good. Queen f5 is also very strong. Um, not too hard for black, but I wanted to show one more line just to show you 
White can keep the queen, but this line I think is, is even worse for, for white than, uh, than the others. OK, so any questions on this main, main line? Any questions for me? OK, awesome. So I want to take a look now at uh, this other move that I mentioned white has, which is the move queen to b3. So I'm going to flip over to here. Let's see, we got g4, d5, of course, bishop g2, bishop g4, c4, c6. And now rather than capturing the pawn, we're going to look at queen b3. And I kept this, this one sort of short and sweet. Pretty much all of the main ideas we've already been introduced to here, they all revolve around sort of attacking this queen on b7 and getting a very, very dominant position from it. And I didn't go quite as in-depth into the ensuing attack. You kind of saw uh, how, how that goes. So queen to b3. And in this case, rather than knight f6, which is their move to defend the d-pawn previously, we are actually going to play this move e6 in this position. And I will show why in just a moment. So white, of course, should capture on b7. Um, I will say at any moment, white can insert c takes d5. It doesn't really matter, but it's going to be played later, and our response is always the same. So let's see, queen b7. Now, of course, it's the same dilemma as before, so we are going to play uh, knight to d7. Now knight to c3. It's starting to look like we might transpose. Uh, but again, white hasn't committed to this yet, so we don't really want to play knight f6, because now white might actually be interested in capturing our c6 pawn. So instead, we're going to go knight to e7. Point being, we're defending our c6 pawn. Now, after c takes d5, we're actually going to take with the e pawn. And like I said, white could insert this move sort of at any moment, but our response is pretty much always going to be the same in this line. We just want to go e takes d5. The point being, that is going to keep this bishop bad, and that's actually going to keep this knight from harassing us. You know, we saw this knight takes d5 line move in our main line here. We can actually just avoid all those complications with this queen b3 line. Uh, so that's the main point. Uh, after queen b3, we're going to go e6. Then we develop like normally. And the, the difference here is we want to bring this knight to e7 to keep this pawn on c6, to keep white's pieces out. So cd5, ed5. Um, what else for white here, aside from d4, trying to get developed? And now the good news for us is the ideas are, again, very, very similar to what they were uh, previously. We just want to go rook to b8 harass white's queen, and this is how we're, we're going to try to win the game. Uh, so here, the best move is queen to a6. I think after queen to a7, you do lose in horrible fashion, although uh, I'm forgetting why live in the lecture, so it's probably worth taking a look at. Uh, let's just cheat. OK, you can go knight f5. I feel like that's not the best you can do. I feel like the computer doesn't remember. Yeah, this queen c8 move is what I wanted to give. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's super simple. Uh, the point is, queen to c8, told you guys to remember this idea because it comes up a lot. The point is now, if you try to develop your pieces, we go rook to a8, trapping the queen. And in this line, if bishop to f4, we're going to keep it simple and actually take on b2. And now, of course, uh, white is going to be on the worst end of, of this position. Black is, again, significantly better. The idea is to go knight g6, bishop b4, and win. Um, pretty simple. Pretty simple idea for, for black here, and uh, a very, very strong idea. Just for example, let's say knight f3, knight g6. If you go back this way, I think it might just already be close to over for you after, after bishop to b4. At the very least, we're just going to castle. Black is miles and miles and miles ahead. Uh, by the way, material here is even for, for black. So you get all of this, material is even. <laughs> White has you know no, nothing to show for it. OK, so that is the line after queen a7. Uh, the main move I wanted to look at is queen a6. It puts up a little bit more resistance. Uh, and here, we're just going to go with rook to b6, forcing white to continue the, the track backwards. I think now after queen a7, we can transpose with this line. Uh, rook to a6, just as strong of a threat as rook to a8. So bishop f4, and we end up in the same spot. So rook to b6, if white doesn't want to play that, um, they're going to go back to d3. And now we just develop very simply. We go knight g6, h3, we bring the bishop back. Knight f3, we're going to develop our bishop out to d6, h4, castles. Black has completed harmonious development. 
White's king is in the center because it makes very little sense to castle after you don't have a G pawn. And white, again, has no plan, no real ideas, uh, and, and black is just very, very much significantly better. Um, just to show you, h5 looks like it makes a threat. Now, thanks to the lack of a g3 pawn, we just plant our knight onto f4. And for example, takes, takes, e3, bishop back. Uh, this is where I decided to stop playing moves because white is just positionally, posi positionally getting destroyed here. You know, two, two bishops, this bishop's a monster, this file's really good for black, and white has no attack. There's nothing going on here. So again, we sped through this queen b3 line a little bit more quickly, but that's because the ideas are, are largely the same, and you just end up in, in this monster position. Unfortunately, no, I didn't continue this out until we won a queen by force, but this position's still pretty good. Uh, so, so questions on this, because I did go a lot faster here, and then we'll do that quick little review again, just to, to get it in your mind. Questions here. OK. Oh, and hello to Sho in the chat, who uh, one of his games made an appearance in, in an earlier lecture for me. Uh, and yeah, he is uh, correct in saying the trick to facing the grob more is to play the right opponents. <laughs> um, and that's why this lecture is a call out of Jacob Sanders. OK, let's take it from the top then. g4, of course, we go d5, bishop g2. We want to snag that pawn. c4, we're going to play c6, stunting the bishop. Queen b3, e6. Uh, again, we're not going knight f6 in this case because white has not yet committed to this capture. So we're more interested in keeping our c6 pawn in these lines. Now we're looking at queen b7, knight d7, knight c3. And now we want to go knight e7 defending our pawn. Cd5, of course, we want ed5 in this case. The point being, we want to keep this knight out and keep this bishop bad. Now d4. Uh, is the best developing move for white. And we just follow it up with rook b8, queen a6, rook b6. And now we just finish our development very naturally, castle, and go knight f4, and white is in big, big trouble. There's the moves. Take, take, e3, back, white resigns. Easy peasy. Um, OK. So aside from that, there's one line that I think I did want to mention that I didn't have time to import. So after knight to c3, we are defending our c6 pawn with knight e7. But for one turn only, white can capture here. Of course, though, this is not going to be a very good idea. We're just going to go rook c8 and rook c4 and knight f6. And in this position, um, again, material is even. And black controls the center. Black has easy development and is way ahead in development, and white has a bishop on c1, and a knight on g1, and a king on e1, and no, no g pawn. So black, again, just, just close to winning very, very simply in this line. Um, so OK, once more, any questions here? OK, easy peasy then. So with that, I think that you guys have enough information to beat 90% of all grab players. Most grab players. They don't play the grob to play h3 or e3 or some other nonsense after d5. They're, they're playing the grob to go bishop g2 and c4 and hope you're not prepared. Um, but now you guys are. So you can just win by force against 90% of grob players. Uh, now with that, I want to go into uh, what I call h3, uh, the sad lines, because they are very, very sad for, for white. So uh, Jacob actually has a book called The Killer Grob which is kind of a funny book because it recommends g4. And against d5, it, it recommends h3. <laughs> so not very true to the spirit of the opening, I would say, uh, is the, the killer grab book because h3 is not very killer. It's very sad. Um, just for example here, imagine that you were forced, like someone forced you to play the move 1h3 on turn 1, and your opponent responded with d5. Uh, think of how many other moves you would want to play before you, you wanted to play the move g4. Like d4 is a better move, d3, e3, knight f3 is a better move, c4 is a better move, c3 is a better move, b3 is a better move, g3 is a better move. <laughs> so it's sort of playing one bad move, then your opponent strikes in the center, and just to avoid losing a pawn, you play a second bad move. 
So now white is basically down to full tempi because h3, g4 are nonsense moves that don't help the position. And d5, now second move, you guessed it, e5 are two great moves that control the center and give black a huge advantage. Uh, so that's why these h3 lines are just very, very sad, sad for white. Um, bishop g2 to follow up. And here, again, you can do anything you want. You can go knight e7. I think you can go knight f6, bishop e6, c6, um, probably bishop e7 or c5, but I, I don't know about all of those. Most of those, I'm sure, give black a, a very easy advantage. c6, notably, is, again, a very logical move and a very good move, similar to our other lines. But here, I'm actually going to recommend the move knight to c6, just because it gets ourselves developed a little bit faster, puts the pressure on white a, a little bit more quickly. Now, knight to c3 does attack our pawn. And here, I like this move, knight g to e7. Now, why would I want to be putting my knight on e7 against a pawn on g4? What do you think the long-term idea is against this? So there's sort of two things to look out for. I think f4 would be an awesome outpost. Yeah, exactly. So by moving this pawn to g4, you have permanently weakened your f4 square. And so maybe one day I'll want to go knight g6 to f4, maybe even knight g6 to h4, to be honest, depending on what happens. Um, and aside from that, there's one more big idea, which uh, is a very useful one to know. So f5 is sort of almost justifying g4, in my opinion. So I'm not going to lie to you and say that black is going to be worse after f5, because it's very, very difficult to do against the grab. But uh, you're on the right track, but not with f5. How do we want to attack this, this pawn? It's just a better, a better version of f5, basically. H5. Yeah, you just go h5. Um, so after e3, that is actually the move that I recommend here. We just go h5. Now, uh, because our knight isn't on f6, our opponent can't play g5 with tempo. Uh, and so they, they still probably need to play g5, because this is actually very, very bad for white if you allow takes and takes, because we simply get to the king side first. So if you go g5, now my knight makes a lot more sense, because I have easy access to these squares. Now, I don't know which one I'm going to choose yet, but better than f on f6, for sure. Uh, now development's still very easy for black. We go bishop e6 over defending our pawn, freeing up our knight a little bit. Now d4, and here we're just going to shore up our center with f6. Uh, now just as an example line, uh, really you can stop here. Black's play is going to be easy. Pretty much against everything, you want to go queen d7, queen side castles, pick a square for your knight, develop your bishop somewhere, and you're, you're going to be much, much, much better. Uh, but as my example line, I wanted to show gf6, gf6, queen e2, queen d7, uh, de5, fe5, for example, bishop d2, castles, castles. And I, I went ahead and stopped here um, because I think it is, again, already like minus, minus 4 or, or something really, really crazy. Um, you can play knight f5 here, looking at these weak squares, looking at d4. You can play rook g8 here, hitting this bishop. You can play e4 here, opening up this diagonal, shutting down this bishop. You can do many, many things and be much, much, much better. So our goal of the opening has been achieved. Uh, we got like a minus 4 position uh, against the grub. And thus, these are, in fact, the sad lines. So one more time, how did we get here? g4, d5, uh, instead of bishop g2, white decided to grovel with h3, defending the pawn. Now we just take over the center very quickly with e5, knight c6. We do this clever move, knight g to e7, with the idea of h5, uh, forcing weaknesses from our opponent. Then we just finish our development very naturally, defend our center, queen d7, and queen side castles. And that's, that's really all you need to know. From here, you just play chess. And just to prove it, let's, let's ask the computer. Uh, minus 3.6. King b2 is minus 2.5. Rook g8 is minus 3.6, and yeah, it's just it's just horrible. It's just horrible, horrible, horrible for black. Um, OK, so with that, I want to take a quick look at the only other moves that have ever been played in the master database after g4, d5. Uh, and after that, this is about as thorough as you can get against the grub. This is going to be every move pretty much you can reasonably expect to, to face. 
So g4, d5, there is one more move worth playing for white, which is e3. Obviously, this move defends the pawn on g4 and actually seems to make more sense than the move h3, right? It is controlling the center somewhere. Um, the good news is you can re respond to this in nearly an identical, nearly an identical manner. Uh, we're going to go e5, controlling the center. Bishop g2. Our move is the exact same. We want to go knight c6. Now knight to c3. We're going to defend our pawn with bishop to e6 this time. I think knight to g to e7 is still a, a very, very good move. Uh, but we'll see why we wanted to leave the knight back in this line in a little bit. Uh, and after d4 here, I'm going to recommend the move e4. The reason being, you can sort of imagine this as a French defense. White is playing you know, the, the typical black side of the French defense here, uh, where knight to c3 has been played uh, seemingly for no reason. Remember, in the French, you would love to play the move c4. Can't do that with the knight on c3. And on top of that, you've brought your bishop to g2, also for some strange reason. And also, you put your pawn on g4, also for some very, very, very strange reason. So these are three things that nobody ever does in the French. And here, white has done all of them, which is why he has a borderline losing position. Um, just to show you the, the main line here, queen to e2, we go bishop e7, h3, h5. And the reason we left our knight on g8 is because in this line, White has opened up the queen's path to the g-pawn, which makes g takes h5 a very reasonable move here. We obviously can't recapture, but now our knight is going to come in to save the day with knight to f6. So that's why we wanted the knight on g8 rather than e7, so we could come to f6 after this line and recapture our pawn on h5. Now I did put in some more moves here. Just uh, You want to do the same thing as last time, basically. Move your queen up in castle. d7 and d6 are both great squares h4, castles, knight b5, for example, you just retreat. And here, what black's play is, is pretty simple. You want to go f5, think about this move f4, attack down this h file uh, against this weak pawn, and use your, your massive center to, to crush your opponent and, and win. win. Win easily. And so that is this move e3. I think I put in a few more moves, knight e2, a6, king b8, f3. And, and here again, there's any number of moves that, that you can play with with black, uh, in, including nothing. And you will be doing very, very, very well in this position. OK, so any questions on that move e3? OK, one more time, how we got here. White plays e3, defending the pawn. We take over the center, same as last time. Knight c6, same as last time. Bishop e6 in this case. And against d4, we are closing the position, forcing white to play a horrible, horrible French. Now after queen e2, our idea is to target this h5 pawn like this, making use of our knight on g8. We come f6 to h5, and then we want a queen side castle, and expand on the king's side with f5. There you go. All right, there's one more final move I want to take a look at with the last few remaining minutes, and that is g4, d5, g5. Um, so are you familiar with this move? Do you play this move? Sometimes. OK. So g5 is the last one I want to take a look at. Um, I believe um, a, a second Jacob in the chess club, uh, Jacob Wilkins, uh, has been quoted to me as saying, you know, I, I don't like playing the, the grob, but if I've been forced to play the grob, I would play 2g5. Uh, so there you go. Jacob Wilkins' seal of approval, this move g5, uh, kind of. So. It shouldn't be too hard to, to guess what we want to do against this move. Um, we want to control the center and somehow target target this pawn. Um, so wait a second. I actually kept both lines in here. OK. I think the one that I, I wanted to recommend is this move e5. You know, Same as last time. We are staying consistent. Want to go e5 and control the center. Now white, in this case, his idea might be to strike back directly in the center with d4, trying to do something like e3, control the center, and defend the pawn with d4. Uh, unfortunately here, you are going to end up in a pretty bad way after e takes d4. Um, for example, what happens if queen takes d4? Uh, I believe here we can do any number of things, 
but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that C5 is, is just very, very strong. We're just going to develop our pieces, check me. I'm going to go here, go knight C6, bishop F5. I own the center. I am not down any pawns. You have a pawn on G5 for no reason at all, and black is much better. So white's best attempt is to try to take this pawn back with a knight, but now we're just going to go C5. And after C3, we simply go DC3, and now knight C3. And here, I just want to recommend the move D4, just to keep everything solid. Of course, this was under threat. So we go D4, white moves out of the way, and now we just finish our development very easily with bishop G2, or sorry, with knight C6. And then finally, the... Uh, point where I chose to stop here is the point where we finally do something about this g5 pawn. You can just let it sit here, but it turns out that white's has actually made our development slightly awkward, right? We obviously can't develop this knight to h6 or f6, and if we go to e7, uh, white's might be able to take this pawn. Can white even just not take this pawn? Is there just queen a5 here? I just assumed the point was that white could take this pawn, but maybe white can't even take this pawn. This opening is, is bad in new and exciting ways all the time. Um, yeah, so okay. You can also play knight e7 here. I thought you couldn't. But instead, I recommended the best move, h6. Uh, again, hard to be worse against the grub, but uh, you, you might manage it if you don't know. So h6 is, I think, the best move. The point being, we just want to get rid of this, this pawn and, and continue our development a little bit more naturally. Now, if white wants to play uh, the annoying move, g6, this looks, at first glance, a little bit scary. It's going to break open our king, but it turns out you can take this, and then you're up two pawns, which is really, really good. Um, well, actually, just up one pawn, but still, it's a really, really good pawn. And if black wants to play, or white wants to play something else, um, I don't even think I bothered to input other moves. No, I did put in castles. Uh, and here, yeah, there, there's a number of things you can do. I think simply bishop e7. Is, is what I wanted to recommend. Now you are forcing white's hand, still has to go to g6. You still can just take this, be up a clean pawn, control the center, and be in a winning position. So with that, that is pretty much every line I could think of for white. That's every line that's been tried in the master's database. People have done other stupid things in the Lee Chess database, but they are all even worse than the lines that you've seen here today which is sort of impressive. Um, so I think the last thing I want to show, as someone, Great Wolf, in the chat has mentioned, um, why not f3 trying to blunder mate in one? This is actually something that I've played with white when I'm trying to just like do something dumb and fast and bullet. Uh, of course, though, our plan is going to be the same. We want to go e5, knight c6, and just play, play to win. The f3 pawn is not going to change our plans, and in fact is only going to make white's position worse. OK. So any final questions for me on the grab? Ah, uh, no, no, you, you fell for the trick. Bishop g2, you can't actually snag this king. So this is why I, I played in bullet, you know, uh, opponent's queen comes out to h4, maybe they'll hang it, maybe they, they, they miss something. Um, but uh, it, I mean, black is winning here. It's like minus three, minus, yeah, it's minus three. <laughs> so pretty good, pretty good for black. Okay, any final questions for me on the grab before we call it a night here? Would you recommend playing the grab? I would not recommend playing the grab. Good question, though. Good question. Anything else? Any burning questions you guys have had about the grab for years that you know you want you want to get answered now? Okay. Well, fair enough. Thank you all so much for joining me here. Uh, my apologies to Jacob Sanders for showing all the refutation refutations to his opening. Uh, hopefully, you can still get away with it sometimes. But if you are a kid in St. Louis and Jacob's beating you up at the grub, now, now, you know, come watch this video. This is this is what they need. Uh, okay, with that, please stick around, guys. We've got Grandmaster Romain Edouard uh, coming in to teach a lecture right after this. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but as always, I want to thank you all very much for joining me here on the Road to 2000. My name is Caleb Denby, uh, and I will see you all next time.